A little bit earlier on, we spoke to the chairperson of the CRL Rights Commission, Professor David Luca Msoma, about uh, the meeting that they had with the Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Dr. Nkosazana Dlamini Zuma, on the impact of the COVID-19 coronavirus on different communities. Well, we're now joined uh, in our Pretoria studio by uh, the chairperson from the National House of Traditional Leaders, Ikosi uh, Sipo Matlangu, who also attended that meeting. Thanks so much indeed for joining us, uh, Ikosi. And I, I wonder you, what thoughts uh, you came away from the meeting with, uh, with uh, Dr. Nkosazana Dlamini Zuma. No, thank you so much, uh, Peter. I think uh, what came from that meeting, we've realized that um, for us to win the fight against this uh, COVID-19, we need to partner, we need to hold hands, uh, because I believe that we can win this as a country. Uh, we had to look at what the president had said, um, of which I think he said that based on the Disaster Management Act, which said that uh, we are currently under the state of national disaster. And he said that uh, we should not have gatherings that have over 100 people. And that has a serious effect uh, on the sector because we live in traditional communities that believe in a communal way of doing things, um, where we have weddings, we have funerals. As traditional leaders, we always hold, host big events uh, like heritage days, cultural celebrations that are on our calendar on a yearly basis. We also do um, uh, participate uh, within the initiation programs, which we lead as a sector. And I think what the president has said uh, has a serious effect uh, on, on those uh, uh, elements and it also changes uh, our way of life and our cultures as a sector but I think it's something that we need to do uh, all of us uh, we need to take our part uh, as traditional leaders and uh, appeal to our communities that um, when they host uh, weddings and if they are funerals we need to scale down uh, what the president said it is law uh, we must have less than 100 people, so we request that uh, when there is a funeral, I think uh, people should come in small numbers during the week and allow families uh, to be the ones that are hosting um, uh, the funeral during, uh, that is on weekends. For weddings, those that cannot be postponed would request that uh, people scale down and they adhere to uh, the COVID-19 uh, protocols that have been uh, mentioned by the president that there must always be sanitation, people must drink water, they must wash their hands. We also appeal to uh, the sector uh, uh, that uh, we uh, have to engage the municipalities. Uh, we are currently, as the House, engaging the disaster management uh, unit where we need to make sure that there is water in rural areas. Uh, so there are currently uh, protocols and a framework, uh, framework that is currently being worked on on how water will be taken to our communities because I think this uh, 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 sickness uh, can be cured, not necessarily to be cured, but it can be dealt with uh, or we can prevent it by drinking water and washing our own hands. Uh, when it comes to the issue of uh, initiation, I think uh, we would appeal uh, to traditional leaders to engage with their communities to see if we cannot uh, suspend uh, the initiation season this year. Uh, because uh, this uh, virus is more uh, triumphant and more prevalent when it's extremely cold. I think uh, it, uh, yeah, it, it finds more comfort uh, in, in a cold environment. And so for us to save lives, because lives are, uh, should be put first, so we are saying that uh, traditional leaders must consult their communities uh, with um, a view of probably suspending it this year to save uh, lives uh, during that uh, period um, uh, of initiation. Uh, Ikosi, uh, you would know more than most people just how powerful um, traditional ceremonies and traditional practices are with our people. Um, how challenging do you think it's going to be to convince people to uh, suspend some of these practices, put them aside, uh, for something that they might see as not being a traditional disease? Look, I think, um, you know, changing culture is very difficult. 
So it would be extremely, extremely difficult uh, because culture is the way of life. That's how our people have lived uh, for time uh, immemorial. But I think this calls for desperate measures. Uh, we have to do things differently. As I said earlier, uh, it will change the way we live. Our communalism system will be completely affected by this. But if we want to be saved, if we want to make sure, because if you look at rural areas, uh, that's where you find um, old people, because uh, that's where people retire to. So for us to save our older uh, people, we need to take all precautionary measures. If we have to change some of these cultures, I would request an appeal to our communities that uh, let us look at them uh, differently. We are only suspending them uh, whilst we are monitoring the situation. I'm sure we'll go back to the way uh, we used to do things, but I think under the circumstances, we need to listen to what the president has said. Um, the call that the president has made is very important because it is not to save himself as the president, but it's supposed to save us uh, as a country because the president has a constitutional duty uh, to spare lives of the citizens. So I would request that our communities, we look at this as a way uh, that will save us and those that we love. And I would imagine as uh, traditional leaders uh, that, uh, that have a lot of influence uh, that education is going to be one of the things that uh, you need to uh, uh, kind of push forward uh, to try and help communities, particularly the most vulnerable in the rural areas, uh, to do those things like the, the basic hygiene and uh, social distancing and things like that. Look, we, we, we are having discussions with the Department of Health. Uh, I spoke to the minister uh, yesterday that they need to make sure as the department that uh, all traditional councils are used as information dissemination uh, areas. Uh, we've requested that uh, health officials should be dispatched uh, to traditional councils that, uh, so that they can capacitate and empower traditional leaders to be able to disseminate information to uh, their own communities. And I think that would also, when I'm talking about traditional leaders, I would also uh, include head, village headmen because this information should go to traditional councils, then cascade down to villages where each and every headman, people can go there and get information on hygiene and how they should uh, uh, behave under uh, uh, the circumstances that we find ourselves in. All right, of course, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much indeed for your time and uh, sharing your thoughts with us uh, on this very important issue.